Good morning, everyone. Rob Bonta, California Attorney General here, here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, let me begin by saying something that we already know, and that is that for too many, 2020 wasn't just about a deadly virus. It was about an epidemic of hate as well. All across the country, we saw the devastating news come in. From right here in Oakland's Chinatown, part of my former assembly district, I'm proud to say, to the deadly shootings in Atlanta, Georgia. And for many, the past year wasn't just worrying about your health, your job, seeing your friends and family, or worried about housing insecurity. It was also about wondering whether you or someone you love would be attacked simply because of the way you look. And while the pandemic may be receding for now, that other fear still resides within us, within our Asian American community generally. And I know this to, to be true because to the Asian American community, I am you. Many of you know, I was born in the Philippines, brought here as a two month old, very proudly Filipino American and Asian American. And not that long ago, my mom asked me if I thought it was okay for her to take a ride into the city. And I said, no mom, I don't think it's okay. I think I should take you. I don't think it's safe. And she worried. And I, like many uh, children of, of mothers and fathers, uh, of grandchildren of Lolas and Lolos worry deeply every day about uh, their parents and their ability to do everyday things, to run errands or go shopping or go for their daily walk. And um, I want you to know that this state sees you to the Asian American community, that you're being heard, and that we're going to keep doing our, our part to fight on your behalf. We're going to keep you safe. As part of that, today, alongside our annual hate crimes report, we're releasing a special report on anti-Asian hate crimes during the pandemic, as well as new resources and guidance for our law enforcement partners and members of the public to help all of us better do our part to fight back against the forces of hate. And the facts from our reports are very clear. There was a surge in anti-Asian violence correlated with the words of leaders who sought to divide us when we were at our most vulnerable. The highest number of anti-Asian hate crime events reported to our office occurred in March and April of last year. And just a reminder and a re-emphasis, this is 2020 data. So March and April of last year is just as we were going into shelter in place and uh, we were in the, the very beginnings of a, of a long um, struggle with the pandemic. In fact, overall, we saw a 107% increase, a 107% increase in hate crimes targeting the Asian community from 2019 to 2020. The majority of it, violent. But despite these reported increases, we recognize that hate crimes in the state are generally underreported. So let's take these statistics for what they are. Um, uh, very notable spikes, very significant spikes in anti-API hate crimes, but also underreported um, as well. So while it's critical to have this latest data is really another piece of a puzzle to help fill in the potential gaps. And what we've seen from the data is that it wasn't just the Asian American community that suffered. At 1,330 hate crime events in 2020, overall hate crimes in the state are at their highest reported level in more than a decade. So hate crimes are up generally, but also, of course, up against the API community. Another stark finding in particular was that anti-black hate crimes were the most prevalent in California, increasing 87% from 243 in 2019 to 456 in 2020. What we see from these reports is what we have seen and felt all year. We are in the midst of a racial justice reckoning in this country. It's multifaceted and it cannot be solved overnight. But one of our most powerful weapons against hate is knowledge. When we're armed with the facts, we put ourselves in a position to be our own best advocates. We put ourselves in a position to be able to fight for what is right. Ultimately, it's going to take building bridges to help make that difference. It's going to take harnessing the resources at our disposal to ensure every community across the state feels safe and feels welcome and is safe and is welcome. 
So beyond these reports, we're also issuing an information bulletin and prosecutor guidance to help ensure state and local law enforcement officials across California have the necessary information and tools to continue to respond appropriately and swiftly to hate crime activity in the state. Together, the guidance and bulletin work to, among other things, help law enforcement do the following things. Properly identify and investigate hate crimes. We know that over half of hate crimes are not investigated or identified as such. So really uh, leaning in and uh, doing a um, more robust role and job of identifying and investigating hate crimes is key. We need to ensure fair and uniform application of hate crime laws across our many jurisdictions in this big state. We also need to increase the success of prosecutions by ensuring more immediate and consistent contact with victims and affected communities. So important that we work closely with our communities, that we be victim-centered and supportive of our victims uh, as we do this important work. Identify alternative forms of sentencing or restorative justice approaches to hate crime prosecutions. So building relationships with the local community, disseminating information, and harnessing the appropriate resources is crucial for preventing, increasing the reporting of, and prosecuting hate crimes. Every community across the state deserves to feel secure and to be secure. We're also releasing updated brochures, very important tools in more than two dozen languages to help members of the public identify and report hate crimes, as well as obtain direct assistance where appropriate. So we're very um, thankful for these important resources that we're putting out into the community in language. However, that doesn't mean that only hate crimes matter. We must take hate in all its forms seriously and work together to root it out at its foundations. Because the truth is that hate incidents can escalate into hate crimes, and they can and do have a direct impact on the mental health and the well-being of our communities. Ultimately, the facts around whether something is a hate crime can often be confusing, often a legal question. But if you're in doubt or you're in danger, we want you to report it, and we'll take it from there. And regardless, victims should consider taking advantage of local community resources, whether it's a hate crime or a hate incident, co-reporting these events, particularly if it turns out that something doesn't rise to the level of a crime. If you believe you or someone you know or love has been the victim of a hate crime, notify local law enforcement and consider taking the following steps. First, if needed, seek medical attention. Also, write down the exact words that were used and take note of any other relevant facts so that you don't forget. If safe to do so, save all evidence and take photos. Get contact information for other victims and witnesses and reach out to community organizations in your area that deal with hate crimes or incidents. Lastly, it's also important to remember that California law prohibits law enforcement from asking individuals, including those who are reporting or are victims of potential crimes about their immigration status, except when the information is necessary to certify a victim for a U or T visa. So that's a lot of information, uh, a lot of different tools and options for law enforcement and members of the public being released today, but it's up to all of us to put it to use, to make it matter, to use the tools in the toolbox as varied and diverse as they are to make us safer and combat the forces of hate. I urge law enforcement and all Californians to make use of the tools being provided today. Together we can tackle hate in all its forms and we're gonna get this done, uh, we're gonna get it done together, working collaboratively with all of our local jurisdictions, local law enforcement from uh, you know, cities and counties uh, at the state level and working in partnership as leaders to address the full on state of emergency and state of crisis that is API hate crimes, API hate violence, as well as hate crimes generally in the state of California. This is not who we are, we can, and we will address these challenges. We will combat the forces of hate, and we will prevail. With that, let me turn it over to Carl Chan, uh, my good friend and the president of Oakland's Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, and someone who himself, as you know, had a recent direct encounter, unfortunately, with hate. Carl? Good morning, and uh, thank you. My name is Carl Chen, president of the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce. And I'm so happy to uh, receiving our Attorney General Rob Bunter here in Oakland Chinatown. And as many of you uh, already know, uh, we are facing a dual pandemic. And of course, this uh, 
you know, Asian hate uh, uh, is the worst of it. And I still remember last month in the May, uh, you know, while, while we are celebrating the Asian Heritage Month, we have also invited uh, our attorney, uh, General Rob Bunter, to be here. And the rally was called National Rally Against Hate. So we are not only focusing on the hate against AAPI community, we are also focusing on the hate against any community. And at the meeting and the rally, and, you know, we were talking to Rob, and we are also talking about we cannot always only focusing on the problems. We must find solutions. And guess what? Today, our Attorney General, Rob Bunter, is offering solutions. So when you see behind me, all these people got very excited because they are seeing helps are coming. And those points being made by our Attorney General, Rob Bunter, and he's offering much, much help. Well, first of all, we realize that there are many, many victims of crime including I myself, we are facing many, many issues impacting directly, not only for themselves, but also to the families. And one of the major issues for the reason why people do not report uh, this kind of uh, crime, because of the language issue. So now that the solution is here, we are offering, what, at least two dozens of languages which will help people to report crime. In addition, they are also helping all these law enforcement agencies, and especially for the prosecution. So what it can do is connecting all the dots so that not only that we can understand and have people to reporting these kind of hate crimes, but also helping the law enforcement agencies and also for the prosecutors to do their job and supporting the victims of crime, but also their families. So I myself recently also was a victim of hate crime. So I'm hoping by providing all these solutions, we're able to let the public know, if you're facing a hate crime and you are the victims of crime, please come forward. There are solutions. There are information. There will be help from the state, from a state attorney general. So with that said, I'm so excited. And I also want to thank on behalf of our AAPI community for our State Attorney General Rob Bunter for your offers. And especially coming to Chinatown, uh, in Oakland, Chinatown, uh, and to have this uh, press conference to let everyone to know. So again, I want to tell everyone, please don't be afraid. We are here together. We have to be united. We have to work together. Together we can make changes. Together we can actually stop all this hate crime against not only for the AAPI community, we can stop the hate crime to against any community. With that said, I want to say thank you again to our State Attorney General. At this time, I would like to introduce our council member at District 4, Shang Tao. She's been doing a great job advocating not only for the city, for her district, but also for our AAPI community. At this time, let's give a big hand welcoming our Council Member Shen Chao. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And thank you, Attorney General Rob Bonta, for coming to Oakland. Um, you know, I, as a refugee, a daughter of refugees, and as the president of the League of Cities API Caucus, this press conference means so much to me. As we have seen during the pandemic, you know, we have seen the, uh, the past president stoke fear into our communities. And what does that mean? That translated locally into our communities. What that meant is that our seniors are more afraid now than ever to walk the streets in fear that they will be harmed, that they will be robbed. And what does that mean locally re in regards to our businesses? Here in Chinatown, we have seen a decline, not just due to the pandemic, but we have seen a decline because people are fearful of walking the streets to go out and do basic things like buy vegetables, you know, meet with friends at a coffee shop to have discussions in the morning like they used to every day. And so we must come together and do better. And I know that we can get there. I think that it is also really important to say that I am standing here with the first ever Filipino American AG and that I am the first ever Hmong American councilwoman in the state of California. Representation does matter. 
And I think that with the AG Rob Bonta in office today, that there are going to be many changes. And some of those changes, as you have heard, are being implemented today. Representation means that not only will the AAPI community feel safer, but it's in all communities. This anti-hate towards our black community, this anti-Asian feeling of fear mongering within our AAPI community and in other many communities as well. These are challenging times, although we can come together and get through this. And I want to be very clear that poverty is violence, that deportation of refugees, ref people who have lived their, the majority of their lives here is violence as well. And we must do better. And I know that we can. A part of this, too, is the model minority myth. I believe that in our AAPI community, the reason, uh, many people believe that our community isn't as vulnerable as we are because of the model minority myth. The idea that somehow a a Asian Americans and Asian immigrants are off uh, doing well and doing better than other communities. When we know that the data shows that there are many in the AAPI community, including our Southeast Asian brothers and sisters, who are not even at par. And because of that vulnerability and that model minority myth, there's a belief that we in the AAPI community need less resources and that we don't need more resources. And I want to be very clear that that is a myth. Resources are needed throughout all communities. And we cannot place a blanket statement amongst the AAPI community. And so I stand here today with Carl Chan and Attorney General Rob Bonta to say that if you have been a victim or if you know of anybody who has been a victim, please report it. It is only through data. It is only through data and counting your reports that will ensure that we can move forward with the resources that all communities need to actually come up with solutions. It is incredibly important. It doesn't matter if you have faced hate and you're in the AAPI community or if you're in the black community or if you're in the Hispanic community, all hate, we must say we are in, we must stand in support of each other and say that we do not, we are not okay with uh, any sort of hate crime and we must report it. So thank you so much, Attorney General Rob Bonta and Carl Chan, and I'm going to hand it over to the Attorney General. Thank you. Thank you.